Hello, everybody. Yeah. Hello. 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 We're going to work on those transitions to make them a little smoother, but there you at least you have that for Boom, now. Boom, we're live. Yes, we're live now. <laughs> uh, Petra, you are joining us. For, actually, let me just start off by welcoming everybody into the channel. Thank you for being here for uh, here on Streamer Square for your brand, your business. Today, we have a very special guest with us, the lovely Petra Cat. She is joining us to talk about organization. Actually, let me adjust this really quickly, just because the top I'm of like your... scooting back, yeah. like... <laughs> Let's see. How far can I go? There we go. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Okay. Hopefully, that's a little bit better. Um, so, yes. we are going to be talking about organization today, and we are very honored, and actually, I got very lucky in being able to pull Petra to join us today, because to me, she is probably the most organized person I know. Um, and I've had the pleasure of working with her, and that includes you, Galen. She beats you by a lot. Hey, <laughs> so, you know what? So, That's perfect. You uh, take it over. You talk about your organization. <laughs> I've got Stardew Valley right here <laughs> and an obsession. That um, is fine with me. And we've had the, I've had the good fortune of working with Petra for a while, so, um, and I've always just been blown away by her organizational skills. But uh, for those of you who are new here and for those of you who are joining us, we are actually going to be um, continuing our business hygiene theme, which we started two weeks ago um, uh, with Galen. And that's when we're kind of discussing the practice of business hygiene. So you know what that means, Galen. That's your cue to do last time oh, on your brand, your business. It was two weeks ago. How am I supposed to remember these things? Who knows? I just cued it for you. It was our kickoff. Uh, uh, um, previously on your brand, your business. There you we go. We talked about... Yeah. Uh, actually, just basically what we were going to cover with business hygiene. Like, what does it mean? What are the next couple episodes going to be? Some examples and took some questions. Uh, and, and the basic summary of it is it's a lot like personal hygiene. It's, it's one of those things that you should do. People will like you more if you do it. Uh, and it'll help you just not fail. I guess I'd say it was a lot of things like just taking care of the small stuff to make sure that business keeps running and you don't fall behind and get overwhelmed. And yes. We talked a lot about building habits, a lot about, um, and we keep coming up to coming back to this, but finding a bit of balance, uh, that kind of thing. Yes. Um, and actually, like, so before we get into just like to add to that recap and Petra, if you have anything you want to disclaimer, that's correct. Uh, so that's the, one organized. of the things that we have to, yeah, that that's the level of our organization here on this show. Um, again, uh, Your Brand, Your Business is a talk show that Gaten and I host um, to kind of help content creators and influencers with dealing with business and legal issues. Um, I'm an attorney, Galen's a financial planner, um, but that doesn't mean that we're your attorney or your financial planner. So all the advice that we're providing today is for general educational purposes. Um, so, uh, I mean, we are always to be open to be engaged. You can always reach us at our social stuff. Um, and actually, what is... Is it YBYB? I think it is YBYB, right? Yes, there, there you go. go. That is the link to our social stuff and, and basically what your brand, your business is about. Uh, we I do see Loco in chat. So thank you, Loco, for Loco is the genius behind Streamer Square and for um, helping us sponsoring your brand, your business, and helping us to increase our production value and actually get these wonderful overlays that you're seeing here. Because if you saw it on our channel or my channel previously, you know that it was yeah a little, so, rougher. <laughs> okay. a little rougher so uh there we go um this is as galen mentioned in our recap this is going to be the second episode of our business hygiene theme we're going to start doing themes in 2018 for this show uh, one of them coming up will be tax time theme yay tax mm. time right but some of the stuff that we're talking about in business hygiene will help you in that preparation for tax time yes specifically this one which is why we made this the first episode and first theme for um your for the business hygiene and you can see the topic down there on business hygiene organization business hygiene as galen mentioned is just the good practices and habits that you develop as a business owner because don't make no mistake about it you're going to hear us repeat this over and over again in this show as content creators and influencers, you are all business owners. you That's the name of the show. Your brand is your business. And Petra is not only an amazing organizer, uh, organizer and project manager, she also has experience as a wonderful streamer and a content creator. So she can speak to both sides of that, right? Um, yeah. That's why we're making this show what it is. 
today is about organization because you do have to get organized for that very quickly coming up April 15th deadline. And for those of you with legal entities, March 15th informational filing deadline. So um, without further ado, why don't we just get into the topic of business or of organization, which is the like what practice and what's important when it comes to dealing with organization. And this one, I will fully admit um, as amazing as Petra is at organization, the organization, excuse me, that's as sucky as I am as organization, which Petra can <laughs> attest to also because we work together on a variety of other projects. So um, I'm just going to be using <laughs> this I'm sorry, is I just thought yeah, this is uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this is where I'm going to be stepping back and just kind of working as a moderator for to let the decidedly more organized people with me here today, Galen and Petra, talk about their skills. But first, why don't we talk about what actually organization organization is? So Galen, what is this definition that you have prepared for us today? I mean, I stole this straight from the dictionary, <laughs> but organization in the context that we're talking about, so not like a business organization or a charitable organization or something like that, mm -hmm. is the condition or state of being organized <laughs> or getting organized. And what that means is you've got your shit together, you've got your ducks in a row, all the analogies that there are, but you have spent some time and effort to, I'd say, align what it is that you want to do with what you need to do to get there. I think that's a good way of putting it. Petra, do you have anything to add with that? Uh, I think I would nuance that that's that's like the state of being but i think it's generally every day taking a step to keep your life moving in the direction you want it to go uh organization to me is kind of crucial if you want to hit your goals you need to know first what you're trying to do and then say that like look at everything that's going on and saying does this or does this not align to that goal and organization is what comes through that it's it's the purpose behind it is that I want to achieve something, thereby I need to be organized to achieve it. Uh, so that's where life, I think a lot of systems that people put in place for organization fall apart because they put a system in and say, oh, it'll make me organized. But if you don't actually know why you're becoming organized or have a focus for it, it'll quickly become something that you don't utilize. So 100% yeah. agreed. Yeah. Clearly, you can see who's the expert amongst the three of us here, right? <laughs> so, um, and and they kind of, and that was a perfect segue into why does it matter, right? So, because Petra obviously already mentioned a few of the reasons why organization matters. Um, Galen, do you have any other reasons to add to that? I mean, no, she hit on the heart of it, which is it helps you get to where you want to go. It's a, it's a methodical way of getting to where you want to go. Yeah. And I think uh, when Gail and I were doing the, you know, the research and the uh, preparation for the show, I, I was kind of saying that, like, you know, I'm not going to be one to offer too many tips about organization. But to me, it's it's one of those things that's hard to explain, but you know it when you see it. Right. I can clearly yeah. tell who's organized and who isn't. Like I can pornography, tell... if we're going to use the legal reference. Wait, what? What? Do you not remember that? Oh, oh OK. On. Yeah. Yeah. You're OK. Yeah. I know. I you. Yeah. OK. I was. Oh. I was like, this, this I thought you were talking decision. about, yeah, 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 so that the Supreme Court exactly. decision about pornography, yeah, okay, so, but then Hold I was, no, I knew, I was thought you were right talking now, about, okay, yeah, we'll I thought you were, it. that's what I was doing, I thought you were talking about organizing pornography or something, I was like, Galen, that's not this type of show, man, Loco's going to kick <laughs> us out, right, but, okay, um, anyway, yes, you know it when you see it, that's organization, that's what he meant by yeah. like pornography, okay, yeah, um, and I think that, like, it, what I would start with was why does it matter is that, um, so I, in addition to doing casting, consult small businesses and consultants who are trying to set up their like first time company. Uh, and so one of the things is that they go in and they have this passion and drive, but they're like, I can't seem to focus on what actually matters and things slip through the cracks. And uh, it, it kind of reduces your chances of critical failure if you can say, is everything that I'm doing today achieving what I need or and then think of it towards your goals um, and your goals like this all sounds very difficult and lofty and like you need to go to like some methodology psych seminar for it but it's really actually just I start with a piece of paper and I say what is the three things I need to achieve right now and what are the dates by uh, and then from there I say okay what do I need to do today to make sure that happens and then you do those today those are consistent constant action you don't need 
huge organizational filing systems or anything, you need the will to make sure that you are taking action every day. Even if it's just, I wanna wake up at nine o'clock every day so I can start my stream at 10, like there's a huge suite of stuff that goes into waking up at 9 a.m., particularly for people like me who are night owls. So <laughs> like, I don't like waking up early. So I have to build my life around that goal. And I think that people forget how much effort and will and energy that takes. And so don't, they don't give yourself a bunch of grief about it if you don't achieve it for the first time. It takes a lot of time to build organization and habits, I think. So people underestimate that and they're like, I'm gonna try it and it doesn't work for like three days. I can't be organized, I give up. And it's not, that's not like gonna work long-term. That's how nothing in your life will work if yeah. you think it's gonna be like that. And that, that's exactly what we touched on last week also. This is why it's called a habit, right? It's, it's a practice yeah. or a habit of organization. And we talked about it a lot, or not last week, but last time, where a habit, well, the research behind a habit is it takes at a minimum of 18 days to something like 254 days to actually have consistent practice for it to become a habit. So it's yeah. not going to happen for you within one week or two weeks. It's going to be in a minimum of two and a half weeks, to probably let's just say three weeks for you to steadily doing this before you are, you know, your body is trained both physically and mentally to get used to waking up early or going to the gym or something like that. That's why you hear a lot of people saying that uh, when they're starting a new workout routine or something, uh, their goal is to make it to 21 days of doing that. Uh, mm -hmm. Like with the rest days or whatever you have built in, but 21 days of doing that, then that's when it becomes a habit. Um, a lot of these business hygiene things, like you're, you're not going to have perfect teeth after brushing your teeth for only one day, right? <laughs> to use Galen's example from last time, you have to consistently brush your teeth to maintain that habit. Um, and I think a, a second point that Petra brought up that I think was very important is that uh, we're going to be giving you tips and tricks today and kind of discussing what of options are available out there for different types of organization. But the key thing is the organization has to work for you. It has to work for you personally. Petra's system might necessarily work for me. Galen's system might not necessarily work for Petra. So you have to know what your own, and this I'm kind of uh, foreshadowing a little bit some of the good habits when it comes to uh, organization. But um, part of that is is going back and reviewing your, your actual systems to make sure that mm -hmm. your systems are working for you and then that actually is helping you to develop a good habit. So, I mean, habits go both ways. If you're doing something poorly for 18 days, you're just gonna get stuck doing that thing poorly for forever. Well, not forever, but for a long time. Right? <laughs> so, um, it's, it's, it's not that practice makes perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect, right? So, and I, so you have to kind of keep that in mind. Um, so, why don't we actually get into the types of organization and examples of different types of organization. So, um, a lot of times when people thinking are thinking of organization, they just picture filing cabinets or, you know, binders or, or mm -hmm. uh, ducks in a row, like Galen mentioned earlier, just a lot of neat piles of paper, right? But physical organization definitely is a key portion of it, but it's not the only portion of it. Uh, we're actually going to be talking about three different types of organization today. The first one is physical organization. Um, and because we're on Twitch, the second one is being digital organization. You can't get around of like, you may not have a lot of stuff on your desk because you don't use a lot of pen and paper, but you probably use a lot of email and a lot of stuff on your computer. So digital organization. And finally, probably the most important, I would say, because this one influences the other two is mental organization. Right. Um, and we're saving that for last because we're probably going to be spending the most time on that one. Um, after that, we're going to kind of discuss good habits of, of getting this organization. So let's just kind of dive right in into physical organization. Um, Galen, why don't you kind of show us, or you don't have to necessarily show us, but tell us what you do for physical organization. I was going to say, I don't want to show you because I'm terrible. My camera is, you know, <laughs> like this, and then outside of the view of the camera is chaos. Physical organization is actually one that I'm pretty bad at. Um, on the business side, I'm pretty good about consistently having a little, like, file folder and drawer kind of thing that I put stuff in, important documents, that kind of stuff, um, and just making the habit of when I sit down with something that's an important document, putting it in, in like the actual labeled file, if it be like taxes or business filing, or just a note that I wrote about a client or something like that. Um, my wife will freely tell you that beyond that, mm, I'm not so good about it. About the only <laughs> thing that I do well from a physical organization standpoint is if I need to remember to take something somewhere like uh I'm, i need to go get my you know car smog checked and i need to bring the form along with me 
I have gotten very good at the habit of the second I think about that, I go and put the thing in my car or I go put it, um, if it's something that I want my wife to take to work, I put it on her windshield so that she can't forget it. Um, <laughs> but, you know, that kind of, it, it was pretzels. We bought pretzels for the Super Bowl and we had whole bags of pretzels and I would just eat all the pretzels. So they went on her windshield. Not like like the bag, not just strewn pretzels. Um, <laughs> but that that's actually one of the things, because I'm not great at physical organization, that's one of the things that I've started doing that really helps is making forcing myself the moment I think of a task that I need to do that requires some sort of physical organization, making it hard for me to fail. Yes. Mm. Essentially. Um, it, it, that that's for physical organization. That's my goal is making it hard to fail, not necessarily like, and therefore I'm going to achieve something huge. Yeah. But yeah. For, I, yeah. Oh, I was going to say, ahead. before we get to the organization wizard, because she's going to have the mm -hmm. best tips and tricks, right? So I, I'm in the same boat as Galen. Mine is just kind of like, fully accepting and this goes into you know outsourcing your weakness so that's something that we'll talk about in a different habit but fully accepting that physical organization is not my gift right no. so yeah. doing the most to minimize my crappiness at physical organization that's my that's my school of thought right so mm -hmm. um for example like what galen's little reminders if i know that I, there's something in a room that i need to go take care of and uh, this isn't very eco-friendly but i'll leave the light on just to remember i need to go into that mm. room to do something or if it's like if I need to bring something from my office to store somewhere else in the room, I'll put it right by my office door. And then so I know when I'm going to go downstairs, I need to take that with me. Right. Um, and because I'm lazy, so I, I like especially physically lazy, I don't know like, OK, yeah, I don't want to walk up and down the stairs many times. So I'll just put it there. And that reminds me to take it somewhere else. So while it's not necessarily a great system, the system also involves, you know, mitigating your own weaknesses. And then so yeah. but let's actually figure out beyond just mitigating your own weaknesses, what's good physical organization? And for that, we have Petra. <laughs> no, I think it's what you guys are both hitting on was, is kind of step one of that, how do I make this as easy as possible for myself? And that's always the goal with any physical organizational system is that if you make the system something you can't do immediately or understand intuitively for yourself, however it needs to be, it will fail. So, um, physical organization for me is taken a long time. I used to actually suck at it. I had a room that had, when I was like in high school, that you had a little path to the bed and you had a little path to the computer. And my mom would chronically, like it was a fight between she and I about everything. And suddenly like it clicked for me that I could not live that way. Um, and so now I have developed after like a lot of the years, we're not admitting how old I am. <laughs> um, I, <laughs> I got binders or not binders, but, um, a filing cabinet, which is right here. Actually, I'll show you so my filing cabinet right here. Um, and I started saying, okay, we're just going to make a folder of this type of stuff. And I put it all in and a folder of this type of stuff, but I didn't like the way that it looked across the tabs at the top, stupid little thing. Right. But I went and bought labels that had a color on it. And then I said, okay, these all fit. Um, I've discovered that I really like color. And so I utilize color in my organizational system to make me like looking at it, to make me want to use it. Um, those are things that work for me. So you need to find the tricks that make you like your system. Um, mm -hmm. So for paperwork, I really highly recommend you split out paperwork to do immediately, to do later, or get rid of it or file it away. Like, And to be honest with you, I really have gotten to the point after so many years of saying, I don't need to file as much stuff and keep it like if you most manuals you don't need anymore because you can get them off the internet throw it out don't weigh your life down with extra paper um but anything that is a receipt for taxes or particularly for casters anything that is a digital receipt have a folder on your computer that you put it into and label it with the name the date and if you want to get fancy a category so this is like, if, I don't care if you have a shoebox that you put them all in or a folder or you have a folder on your digital computer, but put it where you later at like January timeframe, you can like pull it all out and start combing through it. That's like level one if you want it. And then next year, see how that went for you. And then maybe you want to be like, I'm going to create a folder for packs. I'll create a folder for E3, like make it specific to each one. Um, and that way you can kind of start categorizing and lumping things. But if you're the type of person right now who's like, I don't know, it's kind of everywhere, 
Step one, don't try and make an elaborate system of categorization and filters. Just put it in one spot because it will reduce the time. It's like if you are right now trying to go through your entire life and find every little piece of paper three weeks before taxes are due versus like you're like, oh, I will drag out this box and deal with it. Like don't don't overcomplicate it at first. Yes. Um, but so the other thing about that I would say for physical organization is put it someplace that you mentally, like you will see it every day. Like Shane, you're saying I put it all in one spot. That is the spot it lives in before it goes downstairs or whatever. Put it in places you will see right away so that it doesn't become, I forgot, where did I put that? Or your organization has to be physically apparent to you when it comes to your physical stuff. So those are my tips of that. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's, those are great tips. I, I'm definitely mm -hmm. guilty of some of them. I think uh and it's a great point. Like if there's anything that you can uh, reproduce very easily, whether that's going online to download a credit card statement or, or going online to like look up stuff very easily, it's probably easier just to let that be handled in that method rather than keeping binders full of utility receipts or utility statements from five years ago. Right. So like that is something I was definitely guilty of. And I'm still starting to like figure out, you know, one, I probably should just tell them to do paperless delivery. And, and two, I probably should just like... <laughs> Uh, just just stop keeping them right because they're not that important like what what do I need to ever keep if I and it's sometimes it's just kind of dealing with the small things first right if for as far as physical stuff goes um, rather than trying to put it into a pile to to organize later also and this is something my wife always gets on me about is right don't work twice doing the same thing right so rather just if it's something very quick you need to jot down this expense one thing is great you could put it in a kind of a folder for you to all deal with at the same time for tax time or two if you know what it is already to have that excel sheet at the end of every week you just write a note that this receipt was for this this was for this category put it down in your your spreadsheet or whatever and scan it if you have a scanner you never have to deal with it again right um, yeah exactly yeah. like make make a time like i think one thing people misunderstand is that organization will save me time like organization builds structure and time for the things you don't do right now <laughs> like <laughs> it doesn't like make the time appear it means you put time aside to make it happen so you're less stressed later and so like i have a schedule every sunday i sit down in the morning and i have certain things i do for the week and part of that is making sure all my budgetary items are like entered and done with and dealt with because it makes my life easier later and i can search it so um don't don't misunderestimate the amount of time t organization does take, but it will make your life less stressed during periods and it's worth it at the end of the day. Yeah. So, yeah. When done correctly, it'll make things more efficient, which that's what saves you the time is the efficiency. It's not the actual mm -hmm. organization. Exactly. Um, and I think like that was a great segue into digital organization too, because whether you're using folders, whether you're using binders or whatever you're using physically, just make sure it's a system that works for you and, and use those tips that Petra had said, but then like, Loco's common in chat is perfect. Also, whether you're using it digitally, um, you can either do like uh, inbox folders or labels in your inbox. I use the label system, or I try to use the label system in my email pretty effectively. Um, mm -hmm. And so receipts are one thing that's, that's not necessarily the case now because there's a lot more e-receipts, but receipts are typically the one thing that you cannot do in as digital organization. But I would argue that if you're able to do it in digital organization, um, choose that over physical organization because of all the other things. It's, it's timeless, right? Well, not necessarily timeless, but it's, it's a lot easier. You can search through it. It's easier to maintain. Um, you don't have to worry about taking up actual physical space because, uh, you know, um, my wife owns and runs a restaurant and I help her with some of the organization there. But, uh, and this is kind of stepping back a little bit of a proof of like, just do whatever system works for you. She has literal Ziploc bags full of cash register receipts and all those other and like credit card statements and all that kind of stuff, right? It's not fancy. It's a Ziploc bag. And then we just happen to have bankers boxes full of Ziploc bags that have a lot of receipts and all that kind of stuff because our accountant told us that you need to keep those on hand for at least three years, right? Just in case you ever get audited or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So that is a practice that works for her and it, but it ends up taking up a lot of space to have all of those things, but it's just something we can't do uh, it's unavoidable for us because we need to have those physical receipts. But if you can have them digital, do that route because it, one hard drive can like a, what a five inch hard drive, or if you're going to go solid state, a three and a half inch hard, two and a half, two and a half inch hard drive takes up, can hold a lot more than a one inch binder ring binder. So, yeah. Uh, 
Well, but... and on the digital side of it, there's um, there's an app that you can get for free or pay five bucks a month to upgrade it to you know unlimited scans called Expensify, and the whole point of it is to digitally to convert your receipts to digital storage. Basically, it's an app where the whole purpose is take a photo, write a quick note, categorize it, and then it saves it, puts it up into an expense report uh, that you can, you know, I mean, you can pull it over different time frames, but that's, I don't use it only because my accounting software has an app that I use, which does a similar thing, and I'm you know, paying for that accounting software. But if you aren't, you know, if you're just trying to get your receipts digital so that you're not as worried about the physical um, organization sides, if you want to, you know, store it as data instead of as paper and baggies. That's a great, easy way to do it. Um, and it'll reduce, you know, dramatically how much paper you need to keep. Yeah, there's a link for that. If if when you're dealing with the volume of like receipts that some people deal with, and it's almost easier just to do rather than take a step picture of every single thing. But for I, I would argue for the vast majority of streamers, they're not dealing with physical selling the sale of physical goods and services. Yeah. So, that that should be more than enough to help you with your expense tracking. Right? Yeah, you use it when you go out to lunch to talk about business or something like that. Yes. Or you know, if you're traveling to a con or something like that. Oh, that would yeah, be awesome. So yeah. I I think yeah, definitely use the app, but and if you aren't the type of person who wants to do that, I used to um, be uh, I used to do expenses for an executive <laughs> one of my first jobs. And I would literally send her to events with an envelope that says, put receipts in me. Mm -hmm. And all she just stuffed them all in there. And then she handed me the envelope when I came back and I had to go through them all. And I found over, because I had to keep them to prove stuff, receipts also fade. Like yes. the ink yeah, on the receipts ink. will not stay there, particularly if there's tape or anything else on them. Highlighters, particularly if you notice like some restaurants will highlight stuff, it will actually erase the ink after a while. So the best thing you can do is like, Digify if you have physical using apps like that or a photo and put it in a file folder um, so that you don't ever lose the information because the physical receipt is not like going to last forever as whereas no. the photo will. No, that's a great point also. Yeah, so digital organization, yeah. that stuff kind of just you're able to clean up some of the physical stuff. That's kind of like next level, right? So next level organization. What else do you do for digital organization, uh, Galen and Petra? I mean, I use Dropbox. Um, I can, you know, it, it can, it can, it's a folder on my computer, but actually what it is is cloud storage. And I took the time to build out folders for the different things that I'll have documentation for. So it's like client forms, prospecting stuff, marketing stuff, um, you know, just general like spreadsheets that I use all the way down for a bunch of different things. And I just build nested folders that make sense to me and I, you know, increase it over time as a, uh, you know, as I have more things that I'm doing and that really helps me stay organized and it really saves me a lot of time if I take 10 seconds, 20 seconds to do that when I need to use it again, you know, six months later and I haven't used it during that period of time because I can track it down pretty well. Plus it's searchable, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. um, so I use, I use Dropbox. There's also, you know, Box is another service like that. I'm sure there's Google some Drive. Other Yep. Yeah. Google Drive, right. yeah. Yeah. And yeah, the best exactly, part is right. they have Google like well. an app on your phone and it's in the cloud yes. and it's on your computer. So mm -hmm. one of the big things that I have experienced at events is casters showing up to their scheduled time frames and they have no idea what's going on because they're like, Oh, it's on my computer at home. Like and and the problem is is that we know as casters, if you are able to go to events, there's no service on no. force no. at all. Like it doesn't Zero. exist. So the benefits of having stuff like Dropbox or Google Drive is that if you sync stuff offline to your phone, you have your entire like workspace on your phone mm -hmm. while no one else can get service. So if you create a Google Drive or a Dropbox file that says, here's all your pertinent information, here's phone numbers, here's critical timeframes, here's links to things, you will be able to pull it up on your phone and say, okay, I'm supposed to be here at this time and here's the like, here's my critical notes from that meeting or whatever. And it's all in your like offline app. So you don't need to drag your laptop to an event. I've never dragged my laptop to events anymore. I've just gone totally mobile. <laughs> so yeah. It's in my backpack. I have it in the hotel room. I just yeah. don't ever use it because I, it's such a pain in the ass to pop it out and find a Wi-Fi connection that works and set up a hotspot. And... Yeah. I used to carry, I think the first four events too, I always carried my laptop with me. And then it's just, 
it's just a dead weight the whole time because I've never yeah, used yeah. it the whole time. So that after a while, then it's like, yeah, everything just put apps are helpful on the phone. As long as you make sure, yeah, make sure you're, the one problem is then if you lose your phone or if your phone dies on you, then you're kind of SOL, right? I but, carry a charger. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I straight up carry a charger because you can always find an outlet at a con. Oh, yeah. I have a story about that. <laughs> oh, no. Go yeah, go ahead. My, my first E3 experience, I dropped my phone, which if you hang out with me at events, you know that's chronic, and it shattered the screen. Ooh. So I spent, and nobody could get in touch with me. I didn't know where anybody was because we all use Twitter or texting. Uh, and nobody had my actual phone number like memorized and I didn't have anybody else's phone number. So I had to spend like two and a half hours going around LA to get a new oh. screen put in my phone to get back to an event. So like, there are benefits to be having your laptop in the hotel room or being, knowing where you can go get internet, yes. which is typically yeah. your hotel. But uh, yeah, I, protect your protect your assets and yeah. by screen protectors in cases guys <laughs> i will say this yeah. like uh and largely this is largely in part to you also petra i got a surface pro um oh yeah yes those because are great so much better than a laptop and then like yeah you can still do everything on your phone but it's still light enough and powerful enough that you can carry it around in your and like god forbid if something happened like you drop your your phone or your phone yeah. work then you can at least you have that as a backup so i think uh, especially if you are if you're serious about getting digital organized and digitally organized, and I think like having establishing those systems in place, sometimes that involves also, you know, investing in some purchases, whether that's software or hardware to help you to maximize that those systems. And that could be a tablet that you, you can help carry around. That could be phone protections to make sure your phone is, is protected. And it's a or, business expense. It's a business expense. It is. Right? Save those receipts after you purchase them. Right. <laughs> so we're no, going. Yeah. that's, that is a really important thing yeah. that we didn't touch on, but like the point we're talking, the reason we're talking about it receipts so much is that everything you do as a small business, you should either care about for knowing your profit and loss margin at the end of the year um, and the ROI, like was this a good use of my time or not? Like a lot of streamers don't go to conventions and people like wonder, well, why didn't they come? We get to hang out with all our friends. Well, we're looking at the price of the convention and saying, is this worth it to me? And if you aren't thinking that way as a small business, or you aren't thinking about how is my organization returning like factors for my business, mm -hmm. you're missing out on the opportunity to run your business more effectively or efficiently and like, gain more revenue, which in, then in turn you get to reinvest in back in your company. So don't like the reason I keep all of my receipts and expenses from every single trip is that I can write them off at the end of the year and they're my biggest cost to my business. So mm -hmm if I choose to do that and then I look back and say like, we spent X amount of, on events, which I got to talk to like X amount of people versus I could have spent that in giveaways or in new games or in like helping like run a charity stream. Those are things I will look at at the end of the year. So your organization, again, like we said at the beginning has to fit into a focus and goal. What is your goal of your stream? If it's appearing at PUBG events and doing invitationals, then that's totally a worthwhile business expense write all that off, make sure that that's in your ROI. If it's your community or giving back or charity, like invest that way. Yeah. Yep. This is, goes back to the reason, right? Not just makes your life easier yeah. and not reducing your chances of critical failure, but organization helps you analyze information, uh, which is very important because you're like, we'll talk about it. You have to review your organization systems, but at the same time, you have to review your business and if it's working for you, how are you going to review it if you don't actually know what's going on? And you I still won't, can't decide on taxis. Yeah, you won't know what's going on. It, and I still can't decide. <laughs> you won't know what's going on if you don't have the the information available to you through the organization, right? Um, all awesome points. Uh, I'm gonna take a quick uh, kind of pause here just to tell, tell chat and let you guys know. Please do share your organization tips with us. I love to see the comments. I know Loco shared yeah. quite a bit of about what your practices are. Please do share with us what you guys do for organization. Also whether you're a content creator or not, right? Because that's important too. Sometimes there's a lot that content creators can learn from people oh, yeah. who work other industries or work other jobs, right? It's still a very new field. So obviously it has to learn from somewhere. It can learn through trial and error. Like 
for example, sorry, Petra, don't drop your phone at a major event. Exactly. Right? That's a good trial and error, right? So um, have insurance. Have insurance. Phone. Yeah. Uh, so all these type of things. Make sure you bring chargers, right? Chargers are important. Um, mm-hmm. uh, so I, I, well, and I get battery packs all the time at cons. Yeah. Uh, like financial planning ones. One of the best giveaways that people give those little battery packs. Just charge up three or four of those yeah. before you go to something, and you can just have all the power to yourself, and you don't even have to worry about finding an outlet. Yeah. I, I always carry at least two battery packs too. Yeah. And you make friends with people that way. Yes. Everyone yeah. around you will somewhere <laughs> at some point being like, my phone's dead. And you're like, yeah. oh, let's have a conversation. Boom. Now you're tethered to me. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> That's a really good idea. Yeah. I deliberately carrying. bought battery you, packs. You literally like cannot two. leave. Yeah. yeah like, <laughs> if you want my, yeah. if you want my energy, you're going to have to stay and listen to me. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's uh, really good, yeah. Um, yeah, so keep going. Yeah, no, I was going to say, and, and Loco was bringing up lists also. This goes right into the last organization type that we're talking about, which I mentioned earlier is the most organization or most important one because this is influence. This influences everything else, right? So, and which is finally mental organization, organizing your headspace, right? So um, you have to... you. The, we talked about the other systems first because those kind of help you to get organized in your headspace. But the whole mm-hmm. reason you need to be organized in your headspace is so you know what's going on in the future. Um, I like that. Uh, again, and I know you had kind of started talking about this one in, or when we were doing our planning, but I put this under a mental organization as the first thing you should do, which is your day-to-day structure, your daily structure, right? Yeah. So kind of, and this goes to to-do list. This goes to kind of making sure what are your three things that you want to accomplish today? What are your lists um why don't we start with galen and then we'll go to petra and then kind of see and and discuss with chat also what do you guys do to make sure you're organized for the day yeah well i mean the the first thing is having a having some of the basics of what petra was saying earlier which is when something comes across your plate deciding there's a what is it this seven habits of highly effective people i think is the book that that goes into the system or no, it's getting things done where it's, is this something I can do right now? Is this something I can do in the next couple of minutes? Or is this something that I either need to, I either don't need to do or will take longer or I have to do in the future. Um, So the first thing that I do is a sort of twofold system. If something comes across my plate, I categorize it like that. And if it's something that I can do now, I do it. And if it's something I, you know, that takes a bit of time, I decide whether or not I have the, you know, I I should start working on it now. But if it's something that I'm not going to do right in this moment, I either do what Loco said and write a note in my phone. I use Google Tasks, so it's an Android phone, where it's do this, and then I have it actually pop up a reminder on my phone at a specific time where I know I don't have something scheduled, so that it reminds me to actually address it then. And that doesn't necessarily mean I'll do it in that moment, but it might be I just have more free time available to actually categorize it further, figure out when I have time to do it. If it's a longer task and not just a let's do this quickly, I literally pull up, I use you know Google Calendar for, for my business calendar. I pull it up, go there, and just like drag a block of time and label it with something. And then each week at the start of the week, I look at, okay, what are the major things that I have this week? And then at the start of each morning, I go and look through my calendar to make sure that I actually, and sometimes I do it the night before, depending on, I have some, I'm in California, I have some East Coast clients. So sometimes my mornings start way too early to actually (laughs) do even more organization at the start of the morning. So sometimes it's the night before, but take the time to look at what do I have coming up and what do I need to have ready to do all of those? And so just assigning it a time, even if that time isn't do the task, it's just analyze the task, really is my biggest personal piece of mental organization that's done the most for me. And that's, we were talking about writing lists, that is a form of a list, right? It's it's not, um, it's not a proactive list, it's a reactive one, but it's still at least a list. Uh, On the proactive listing side, that is when I actually do take the time to sit and analyze some task that I have to do. I use Evernote, which is free and an amazing notebook software. You, I've used OneNote in the past too, and sometimes I do it on paper if it's something that you know I want to draw or something like that. Um, like, is in, I don't mean like draw pictures, but like you know if if, if I need to do connecting lines and things like that because that helps. Um, 
I'll sit down and list out all of the tasks that need to be accomplished for something so that I can then do my calendar scheduling for it. Uh, it takes time to do, but it means I don't lose track of things that I'm working on. And then I'll have like my wife or my business coach or someone say like, wow, you're really good at accomplishing the things that you said you're going to do. And literally the only reason that's true, it's not because I'm really good at accomplishing things. It's not because I'm like super smart or something like that. It's just because I actually assign a time to do all of the things and do them during that time. And if something comes up that pushes them just because it's more important, like someone wants it, like a prospective client wants to schedule a call and I was going to work on doing some admin type stuff for my business. I just move it to another open slot. I don't ignore it or delete it. I just push it to a different time. And that can get overwhelming sometimes. There are some days where it's like, shit, uh, it was all, you know, last minute stuff. But most of the time that helps me not drop any balls. And so that's, it's, it's a combination of listing and assigning times. It's, it's that simple, at least for me. That was really good. Petra? Yeah. Uh, so my day start, I use um, a system called, called Best Self, um, and it's a physical journal. Um, because I, I was doing a lot of stuff digitally, and I realized that I missed having like a planner. Um, and so I didn't want just any planner, though. So the Best Self system, which I am not sponsored by, not affiliated at all, I'm just using it personally. Um, is a physical book that every day you it's uh, you write down what you uh, the three big tasks you have your goals and then three things you're grateful for in the morning and three things you're grateful for in the evening along with your wins for the day and what you learn so it kind of gives you like a framework for your day which I've really appreciated um, particularly when I was running like six different job career aspirations <laughs> at once and felt overwhelmed by life um, so I start my day by identifying the three things I have to get done that day. Um, and usually it's in line with like Galen, I will go through on Sunday and look at the week ahead and mark out time on my calendar. Um, going back to physical or digital organization, um, we didn't touch on calendars. And I really do think that that's like something that Galen and I both do, which is I will say, okay, I have X block of time. I'm going to put this to this task or this to this task. Um, I look ahead at my events that I have coming up or things that I want to do. Even if it's silly things, like I want to go like spend two and a half hours with a friend for drinks. But in order to make that happen, how do I arrange my day? So I'm not late. Like it's a chronic thing. I'm constantly late. It's surprising being an organized person, but I have learned that I miss, I try and maximize my day and get every little second. And I forget to account that it takes 30 minutes to drive someplace and that's wasted <laughs> time in my place. But I have like learned to write down, literally it will take me 30 minutes. You cannot work on anything else in that time uh, so that I'm not late. And that's actually something that I'm um, improved upon within the last like year um is not being late to things don't talk to me my like followers and subs that are in chat right now <laughs> i don't know uh so i start myself my day that way i like make sure to look at the time slots within the day that they still align with what i still need to do and then um i then like utilize uh the pomodoro technique lately which i've oh, really been appreciating my wife loves that yeah, um, and I use, so one of the big things that are time wasters is this little device here, right? Um, and particularly like with casters, uh, Twitter and other feeds and social media can be very distracting. Um, so I've actually been using an app called Forest, um, which again, I'm not affiliated with or anything else. It's just, um, there's tons of these different apps out there. This happens to be a paid one where you can set a timer and uh, a tree or a bush or a f like flower will grow the longer that you don't touch and disrupt the app. So it's a way that I've learned to like keep myself from being distracted. Your procrastination monkey, which is another blog entry out there, you can just look procrastination monkey. Um, if you don't like the task you're working on, your mind will naturally say, well, you don't have to do it. You can go on Twitter. Mm -hmm. And then soon you're like, oh, that was an hour of my life. What did I actually, not this task, that's not what I've actually accomplished. So find ways to make yourself focus on the task at hand is really good. Um, and build your environment to support that. Don't let, if you aren't, if you are someone who is easily distracted by noise, get like noise canceling or make the room quiet or put on side white noise. Um, if you are someone who likes a lot of activity, like find spaces that work with that. 
Um, so don't underestimate your um, environment in your organization. And then uh, use your calendar too. Like, don't just put the event and the task in it. I actually have gotten really good about saying, this is the time and these are the five things I need to accomplish in this time. Like, put your lists that you create actually into the time slots that you're creating so that when you open it, it's already set there for you. You don't have to spend 15, 20 minutes saying like, well, how do I attack this? Um, or say the goal for this time slot is X so that you actually know what do I want to achieve at this time slot. Um, I really love the reminder system. It's awesome. Um, I really like Google reminder because you can do it by location or time. Um, so if I'm at the store, I locate my reminders for what the, the shit I forgot at home that right. <laughs> like was not in my grocery list that I made comes up. Um, and then breakdown tasks. And I want to talk about lists really quickly that I had a habit for a while that I developed that was I put everything I needed to do in a giant task list for the day. And what I was finding was that the big things and the little things were equal weight. And that was not the right way to approach it because then I would go through the list visually and I would say, oh, that's easy. Oh, that's easy. And I would do all the easy shit, but the big stuff would always like go on. I accomplished like, something. Check. Yeah, check. <laughs> and then I like five of those things are checked and I'm like, I'm done for the day. And I'm like, that was five easy things that took me 30 minutes, not the giant thing I actually needed to work on today. So um, if you have lists like that, segment them that you only get like three easy things a day or put them at the bottom so that the, the big stuff is actually at the top or make nested lists that say, hey, this big thing, I'm just going to put, instead of thinking and trying to start the task right away, Put down all the things you think you need to do in what order to whatever level you think to build out a easy list for a big thing. And mm -hmm. that way you kind of trick yourself mentally into making it a, an easier at, um, task for yourself. Or if you get halfway through it and you look at your time and you're like, oh, I've spent an hour on this. That's good enough for today. At least you've made progress on that item. Um, particularly for things that are like for streamers specifically, new overlays, rebranding, getting new art or like emotes these are huge things that require like i have to email artists i have to get quotes i have to compare those quotes i have to look at my budget and all those things hopefully are things you're doing already but if not maybe that's a task where you're like <laughs> what should i be doing to like make this happen instead of like message an artist and be like oh yeah i need emotes oh you can't do it by tomorrow because you have a queue like particularly like creative casters who are fulfilling commission requests um, they have to build their organizational tools in order to handle their volume mm -hmm. and conduct their business. So um, put that all in a way that you can say, this is the definition of done. And I love that, like that whole system. If you haven't come across it, the definition of done is like identifying before you start what actually you think needs to happen here. And yeah. then you have a way of looking back to say, was this actually what I wanted at the end of this? Or how did it turn out? I had a, um, I've been running like a charity um, spare stream in October with um, former Frag Dolls Saber. And we have a definition of done because we say, we, this is the money we want to achieve. We have a show list that this is the prizes we want to give out. Like we've worked with our mods that they can run the whole thing. And it goes off swimmingly every year and hilariously because we have a definition of done is that this is what we want to achieve. And we set it out, not just, oh, we're going to raise some money. Like that's that's great that's a good first level but take it a step level and make it more concrete for yourself particularly as a business um the next thing i would say is is back to that time boxing don't let tasks overwhelm you particularly for casters who spend eight days eight hours a day seven days a week eight casting. days a week <laughs> eight days a week yeah uh beatles reference yep uh the time you spend off cast is crucial to make the time you are on cast successful and if something is taking too long, reassess why, and then like evaluate whether it needs to be done or not. Um, I have done projects where I realized this is taking me way too much time. I want to let somebody else do this. Uh, and so at what point do you invest your time versus other people's time or slow, like requesting assistance for something is really important. Um, and then uh, take the time to reflect and don't become overwhelmed that if you have to change your mental organization, you have not failed. Um, for me, I used to get really hung up in the idea that 
if I didn't do something the correct way that I had at the beginning of it, I had somehow failed myself. Um, that's 100% not true. You are a work in progress until the day you are no longer sentient on the planet. Uh, like You will always find something to improve upon. So don't set yourself up for failure by saying, well, this is my organizational method, and if it didn't work right, then I failed and I can't ever do organization. Just try and iterate over time and that you will get better. You didn't start as a caster by knowing everything you know now. Do not expect the same thing from your organizational system and yourself. So, yeah, those and are that, my mentals. Completely those are awesome. Yeah. Great tips. And I think like that, that kind of goes back into what you mentioned earlier, too. Like starts, even with the mental stuff, you got to start slow, start simple. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't just jump right into trying to have like, you know, everything just to be Johnny go organized or, or whatever. And then just find a system that works for you. That might be a system that starts off very slow. Right. Uh, you just mm -hmm. start getting used to writing to do lists, start actually organizing. So, like, I mean, uh, for the, I'm just being honest, like so for me, organization, I'm probably starting at like a negative five. Right. For organization. Right. Petra is probably what I'm going to get on the scale. Like I say, one to scale of one to 10, then she's probably at like a eight or a nine, right? For an organization where Galen, I don't know what you would put yourself at. Um, but I know I'm clearly off scale, right? In the, in the wrong direction. So I, so for me, I need to, I need to work my way up to getting to those parts. And for me, that might just be starting to use my to-do list more regularly, right? And it's a hat for me, like I have these systems in place, but it's a matter of making sure I'm consistently using those systems to, to develop it as a practice of good business hygiene. Um, mm -hmm. And so for me, like, that's why I'm, I'm just kind of sitting here and soaking up a lot of what you guys are talking about also and just seeing what chat's talking about and, and what you guys are being able to share. Um, I'd love to, we're going to save some time at the end because today is actually, um, I think we're doing well on time, um, but we're going to save, we might take a little, save some time if we go over a little bit just to kind of discuss the uh, practices or products that we use that we would recommend, right? Because I, I kind of started taking some notes on the ones you guys were using and talking about. Um, we'll do that at the end and we can try to, there's a, uh, let's go ahead and actually share the Discord for Streamer Square. That way we can, there's a channel specifically for your brand, your business, and we can continue the conversation about organization there, posting links and different kind of things to share uh, some of the items that we use. Um, but right now, as far as mental organization goes, let's go and both Galen and Petra kind of talked about what are some of the good habits that go with mental organization or just organization in general. One of them specifically being reviewing your systems, right? And then this is also, um, Petra had talked about it on the different types of lists, right? So I think it's awesome spreading out a, a, a large task um, into several micro tasks that you can then kind of check off and, and it helps you, it rewards you, right? You like, everyone likes to feel that reward of, hey, check, ding, right? This, so this is, and you can kind of say this is, um, I've gotten stuff done, right? Um, so it's splitting up into the micro task and this is related to something that we talked about before when we were for, you know, uh, teasing this episode of organization, which was called Eating the Frog, right? And I, yep. Petra, I don't know if you're yeah. familiar with this one. So there's a quote oh, yeah. that's supposedly attributed to Mark Twain, although that there is some dispute about that. But basically, it's eat a live frog first thing in the morning and nothing worse will happen to you the rest of the day, right? So basically, that's just getting rid of the most disgusting, undesirable task that you have first thing in the morning when you still have the most energy and when you still have the most time available, right? Um, the benefits of that yeah. are then, if you get done with that, that huge, feels like a very large accomplishment that you finished and that kind of serves as your motivation or your kind of drive for the rest of the day. And everything else would actually just seem much easier also. If you have a phone call that you don't want to deal with or a client that you don't want to deal with or a large contract you need to review or draft that you don't want, just get that out of the way and then you'll feel so much better. Because I know for me, like, uh, I... I get that apprehension before a large task comes up. And sometimes the apprehension gets so bad that well, I'll start doing the other small tasks, right? Well, while that, mm -hmm. that helps getting the small tasks done, it's still that elephant in the room hanging over you that's saying you still have to get this done. And yeah. that's part of uh, getting in the habit of doing your most difficult tasks first. And I think this relates to something that you had written also, Galen, about how do you eat an elephant? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. so for on the on the eat a frog thing it's <laughs> I, I think part of that too is it's it's for me it's definitely get the most annoying thing done right away because i am a morning person and i do tend to have the most energy in the morning and come to in the afternoon i've stopped doing anything productive and i pick back up you know at night um but for my wife she is not a morning person at all like 
And that was really, it took me a while to understand that because it was, she's so different than me, <laughs> but she gets like a burst of energy later in the afternoon when I'm sitting there, not, when I'm sitting there like, ah, I should complete some Hearthstone quests. <laughs> uh, she's actually ready to kick ass. And so I think for that eat the frog thing, I think part of it too is just knowing when you tend to be the most focused or able to accomplish things. Um, Cause for me, it's definitely the morning. And for, I know for a fact that for my wife, it's not. Um, so if I were to say to her, oh yeah, just do your hardest things in the morning, she wouldn't get them done. I don't think anywhere near as well. Uh, but you know, same thing for me. If she said, oh yeah, just get them done early afternoon. It'd be like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> I've got some really important farming to do in Stardew Valley. <laughs> Please do not disturb me. Um, <laughs> on the, on the, how do you eat an elephant? That's a quote that I use a lot when I'm, when I've brought on a new client, one of the big, the, the two big things that we need to accomplish first are figure out where they stand today financially. What does their current picture look like? And then what is their vision of the future? Because we want to know where they are and where they want to go. Because otherwise it's hard to plan a path between the two of them if you don't know those two pieces. Part, it, it, there's a lot of checklist organization, that kind of thing that you can do to make figuring out where you are today a lot easier. A lot of people, in fact, I'd say the bulk of my clients don't have a well articulated vision of the future. Um, they have all these thoughts, ideas, things that they're interested in, but they haven't necessarily articulated it, laid it out, that kind of thing. And it becomes, it can become overwhelming because, you know, it's, I want because there are so many things you want to do in the future and it's so undefined and you don't know if you're, you know, you don't even know if you want the right things and so on and so forth. Um, so what, what I try and have people do and I try and walk through with them is let's dream really big. And I've got a couple of exercises that can help with that. But then we take those really big dreams and try and make one month, three months, six months, a year, three year plans to get towards that. So it might end up being, to use a sort of stereotypical, stereotypical example, I want to retire at 65 and have 60K in income a year coming from my investments, something like that. Well, you know, that I could do the math quickly right now, but that's a lot of money that you need. And if it's, you know, I'm, I'm 29, 65 is, a long way off, right? 36 years. So it's hard to, it can look scary to say, I need to have this much at the end, but then you have to put together, wait, I've actually got 36 years to do it. Where do I start? And so that's the quote that I use is, is the, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Eating an elephant, if that is for some reason, the thing that you have to do is a huge task. Elephants are giant. They have leathery skin. They have parts that you don't want to eat, all that kind of thing. Um, <laughs> They're endangered. They're yeah. endangered. You know, Joel leaves his lights on. Eating an elephant isn't that bad. Yeah, um, yeah, that's clearly the same vein of non-eco-friendliness. No, but it's like evaluative. Is this goal the yeah. right goal for you? Like, yeah, that's that's what I meant to turn it, your metaphor no, into. I, I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but it's it it's intimidating, right? And so the way that you make it not intimidating is what you know Petra was saying earlier of break it down into small manageable tasks um, because it could be, again, using the example of the kinds of things that I work on with my clients, it could be figure out what you can save today. That might not be enough if you save that amount per month, every month for the, again, next 36 years, for instance, to get you to that number, but it's better than doing nothing. And the fact that you're doing something and the fact that you're planning for it again is better than doing nothing and puts you in a position that when you've got an opportunity to do more you're already prepared to do more um and so that's that's what i have there for the for the getting organized piece is don't get overwhelmed by where you want to be and how much it'll take to get there start with what you can do today and we talk and this goes right back to the start you know start with what's manageable because if you start doing what is manageable and getting things under control, then you'll find that you have more opportunity to do more, 
when you're able to, right? So don't just despair at, oh God, I can't do it today. And that's what I have there. That's why I had the, how do you eat an elephant is because that's a really big issue that I work through with clients, which isn't even, which isn't even financial, right? Like, I mean, it is, but it's not like I'm doing some crazy math to figure out this thing that they can do. It's helping them figure out what they can do today to help get them to where they need to go. And that is in my mind, pure organization. And that's a trick I learned from working as a project manager for a healthcare IT company, because if it's install this enterprise hospital, electronic medical record and billing system, that's a big freaking task, right? Like, I don't know. I, and my team doesn't even know what the heck they're doing yet. So it starts with those small pieces. Yeah, and I would rant I, over. <laughs> no, I I think that like that hits the nail on the head that many people I think have dreams and hopes and and they're like you know everyone wants and to make it relevant for streaming like I want to have a successful streaming channel. Well, and I I love talking to streamers who say I just want this thing and I say what are you doing every day to get there? Because mm -hmm. you're not going to build that tomorrow. Like it, I love the quote, build it and they will come, but <laughs> it's not always the case with streaming. Like, <laughs> um, so you could have the best content and channel that nobody knows where you are or who you are. Uh, yep. then you're, no one's going to know because there's millions of casters now. Um, so I think really defining out your vision and then realizing what are the progress steps to get there? Um, for me, for uh, good habits, there's a story that I like, which is um, an expedi two expedition teams set out to get to the South Pole. And the um, one of the teams said, we're going to march as far as we can every single day, knowing that there's bad weather. Um, but on good weather days, we'll make up for the bad weather days. Versus the other team said, every day we're walking 20 miles. That's it. No matter if the weather is great or bad. Uh, the team who took consistent 20 miles a day action ended up beating the team who said, we're going to push and push and push when it's good days of weather, and we're going to camp out for days at a time when there's bad weather. The team who said consistently, no matter what, we're going to take consistent action, made it happen. So even if, you're, if your dream is to get a channel that has a 1,000 viewers, and we'll just make it very low bar, right? Or I want to get affiliate. There's very easy ways right now that Twitch breaks it down for you to say, this is what you need to be doing every day. So take those and then build that into your calendar and say, okay, I need a schedule. This is how many times I need to stream the next three days to make affiliate. These are the time slots. This is what I'm going to stream during those time slots. This is how I'm going to craft my tweets or like think of a game plan and then make it just a month. And then by the end of that, you'll have affiliate or you say like every month I want to gain an extra 20 viewers, look through your numbers and figure that out. Or just say at the base, say, it feels like my chat's more active now. That can be a win for you too. So um, you don't have to let also other people's definition of success to be yours. Uh, particularly for me as a caster, as an affiliate caster and a part-time caster, uh, I had a very, very difficult choice at a point about three years ago where I was like, I'm either going to pursue my career in the real world, or I'm going to try and make casting work. And I looked at it and said, you know what? I don't want to cast seven days a week for eight hours. That's not no. my dream. Right. No, God, and so, sounds awful. yeah, like I was just like, I love my community. I love streaming, but this is not what I want to do. Um, and it's not what my life is like needing at this moment. Uh, and so you can let your own definition of success be different than the people around you and don't let peer pressure make that change. So however your organization needs to be, again, going back to where we start talked at the beginning is define your own focus and your own vision and then the steps to get there for yourself. You can solicit feedback, but I love this quote too that's like, form your own opinions. There's way too much room for interpretation in the opinions of others. They don't know you and they don't know where you are at. They can have as much empathy and understanding and be your friend or your stranger, but only you can say whether you're successful or not at the end. Um, so don't, don't let also like, like Shang said, my system may not work for you, but if it works for mm -hmm. you, great. That's all that matters. Um, and nobody can tell you different because no one can deny your own experiences. Just don't be a dick about it. That's fine. But, you know, <laughs> uh, you know that's, that's what you have to make sure that you take in terms of a mental state, I think. Um, so, yeah, I guess for me to wrap the, my end of it, that organization is very easy to say, 
make, make this full folder structure and put these yeah. things in your calendar. But if, again, like I said, if I just gave you that as a consultant for your business, but you have no investment in using it or understand why, then it's never going to work. So um, I would definitely suggest that sitting, taking the time to sit down and figure out what you want is, is hard. So start there and then build out from there and work through it because otherwise you'll never get anywhere. <laughs> yeah, that goes back yeah. to our um, business philosophy episode, which was the one we had before we started with business hygiene because that's how, I mean, all of that is, that's your motivation, right? Why are you going to do these things in the first place? You still have to keep that in mind all the time just to both as just kind of like a reminder to yourself of why you're doing what you're doing because eating frogs suck. Right. So yes. the, the, you're going to the only reason you would want to do that is if you have an idea of what the reward is that you're hoping to attain at the end. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I think that's a great way. Um, that's, I think that's also a great spot for us to kind of talk about. And, and, and just like Petra said, our systems won't necessarily work for you. Right. But at the same time, that doesn't mean you can't learn from our system. So we're going to share some of the things and the products that we use, because uh, rather than starting from scratch or building out your own things, just test and see what works for other people see if it helps you. If it helps you, great. Uh, try to do what you can to adopt it. If it doesn't, that's part of the periodic review. Make sure you examine it if it makes sense for you. If it doesn't, then you just find something else. Right. Um, you guys can just and. At, at, during this part, if you at, really at any part of the show, if you want to share what are some of the products th and things that you use to help you with your own organization, please feel free to go ahead and do so. Um, and I know that we had the Discord link earlier. I'm going to go ahead and post it again so that we can kind of continue the conversation there. If you're watching this from VOD or something like that. Also, we will discuss the different types of products that we use there on that streamer square discord. There is a your brand, your business channel in there. Right now, it's only Galen and I pretty much posting, so we get kind of lonely. Please do join us over there. Right. <laughs> so, all right, um, let's talk about, uh, and really, uh, whether it's a physical organization, digital organization, or mental organization, whatever it is, you can feel free to share some of the tools that you use. Um, either one of you want to start? I, I did make a few notes about stuff that, you, at least the ones that I caught yeah. to kind of ask you about or later, but. I'll start. Okay. Uh. I utilize Google heavily. Mm -hmm. I welcome my digital overlord. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so definitely utilize Google and, and determine what products you find useful or not. I really like spreadsheets because I can filter and sort. So dumping stuff in spreadsheets is always great for me. Um, and two, in terms of time tracking or time boxing, um, time boxing being a concept that you set a certain amount of time for a task and it must be done by the end, which is a good mental trick to say, I have a deadline, I have to get this done. Um, so, which doesn't work for everybody. Um, the low budget version is your kitchen timer or the timer on your phone. Or if you type into Google, set timer for 10 minutes, Google will actually set a timer for you and count down and make a noise at the end. Um, so I use um, all, I've used all those. And then if you want to get a little bit more sophisticated with it, Forest app, um, which is available on Android and iOS, as well as um, Pomodoro technique. There's a bunch of apps if you search for Pomodoro. Um, in terms of if you are a Chrome user, there's a Chrome extension that I really like called Win the Day, um, which has three, th three aspects to it. It asks you what your three tasks are for the day and you have a list in front of you. So you're constantly reminded of like, what are the top three, three things I have to get done? It also has a habit forming page to it, which you can write down three or four habits that you want to use and you can mark off per day. And also has a focus time um, system, which will block Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, and other social media and has a countdown to that task being done. Um, so it will prevent you from getting distracted um, and or letting other social media inter interfere with your task. Um, and then I also use Best Self, which is a organizational tool, uh, an analog organizational tool, which is a journal, um, but it has a lot of structure to it. Uh, other people use bullet journals and that was way too free form for me. I was like, nah, I don't have that kind of time in my life. So uh, Best Self lays out a very strict methodology and structure for your day. And then um, I also utilize, uh, 
the concept of a morning ritual and an evening ritual. Um, and because not only does it, I'm really working on sleep right now. <laughs> uh, if you have things that you want to get like a structure to your life, having a structure at the beginning and saying, these are the things that I want to get done every single morning that I want to build habits for. And these are the things I want in the evening in order to make my life successful and for the next day. So I use morning and evening rituals now. Um, and they can be simple things too. Like don't underestimate Finding my keys and wallet seems to be a really stupid thing, but I can't ever find them. And so I have it in my hip like ritual to say, this is where they go and they don't leave from there. <laughs> so you, your evening ritual for, for me at least says put wallet by door. So I don't ever forget it as organized as I am, that still happens. So um, those are the products that I would recommend use. Now the whole Not internet sponsored. knows where to find your wallet if they visit you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Galen, what about you? Um, on the physical side, I do a couple things. I do have like a file cabinet back there that has, you know, folders in it for things that I need to store physically. There are also some things that are, you know, maybe, maybe more unique to me, but that I, that I try and make sort of stupidly simple on the physical side, like, this calculator is a financial calculator and it is amazing for doing really quick math of the type of the style that I do. It's much, it's more complex than you need for like arithmetic, but for doing the kind of math I do, perfect. It costs like 20 bucks and it was really annoying to be at my co-working space and not have it because I'd left it here on my desk. So I just bought a second one and put it in my backpack that I take to the co-working space. Like I even do, so I, I actually consider that a, a style of organization like I said, of making it so that you can't fail. So I don't have to remember to take my calculator. And I know that makes me sound dorky, but I don't have to remember <laughs> to take my calculator because it's just there already. Um, so those kinds of things were, were, again, my physical organization is, is completely geared around don't fail. Um, I put, you know, mail that I have to address on my keyboard because I know I'm going to use my keyboard because I'm obsessed with being like playing games and being on Twitch and stuff like that. Um, for the actual like products that I use, that's almost all on the digital side. Uh, and for me, there's a couple things. I use fresh books for my accounting. I'm switching over probably to QuickBooks, but I use accounting software um, so that I actually do track what I'm earning and what I'm spending in, you know, relatively real time. I make myself at the end of each day, well, first of all, what I earn is done automated because I run my invoicing through it. Um, what I spend is I make myself at the end of, of each day, just put in what I spent. Most of the days, that's nothing. Like most, there just doesn't things, but it's just a quick little pop-up reminder. Like, did you do this? And if not, and I went and got a coffee with someone locally to talk about business, I just entered that in. I use a, a CRM, a client or customer relationship manager software for my keeping organized with the tasks that I have to do for clients. And the one that I use is financial planning specific, but it's called Wealthbox. It lets me assign tasks to clients, tasks for me to do, the client never sees it, um, where I can set a date and time to follow up. So it's a lot like my Google calendar, like we talked about before. Um, it automatically syncs to my email. So all emails that I've had back and forth with the client are attached to that client's profile. So I can go to one central place to see all of that kind of stuff. Um, and I can set up workflows in it. So if I add a particular tag to a client, because it has a tagging system, or just to to anyone in there. So I could, um, I think, you know, I think Joel is tagged as COI, right? And then I have other folks tagged as like client or prospect or something like that. Um, but if I, it has it where if I add specific things to that client's profile, it kicks off a workflow automatically. So I don't have to remember to do it. And most of those workflows are just checklists, like specific checklists for things I need to do when I have, when I sign a new client or things that I need to do for a client who is um, like getting married, right? Like if I had a co-client, it brings up a checklist of like, did you check all of these things? Um, because people really don't like it when they get married and forgot that they left their account listed to go to their former girlfriend. Um, and then it does. Pro tip, don't. <laughs> pro, pro, pro tip, your spouse will probably be unhappy about that. But it's just, a, it, it's, it's a lot of software that I've found 
because I set aside time to research what is good software to do this kind of stuff. Um, more broadly than outside of just financial planning and running my business, it's the things I mentioned earlier. Google Calendar is great. Google Tasks is great. Um, I use Evernote for just writing down random thoughts that come to me. I, I usually write them down on my phone if I'm, if I'm mobile, but if I'm here, I write them down and I try and get them to pop up at some point in the future where I might remember it better. Um, and then, let's see, I'm trying to think if there's anything else on the digital side. I have, a, in the, I have in the past used software where I could send, or a, a website where I could send an email to it and it would send it back to me at a specific date and time um as a way to do reminders but now i get too many emails for that to be useful uh i think that's the majority of what i use software wise but i've really transitioned to it being mostly software and if i do have something that i write down like a, a physical note about a client because i'm in a meeting and it would be disruptive if i'm sitting there typing um i set it up again so that i at a certain point in the like at the end of the day have my cleanup tasks the accounting the putting client notes into my crm that kind of thing yeah i think so that's it's really good. part of it's just building the structure of yeah. giving myself time in the day to actually do it because it is hard to find the time in the day to do it and for for those of you in chat who are probably more similar in my boat where we're in the negative scale or off the scale like this is evidence of when people have uh, or petra and galen have put in a lot of time both into the research and the development and review of their schedules or their organization systems rather. Um, they found something that works, whether it's industry or career specific, job specific, or whether it's kind of a more broad thing. Um, you have to kind of go ahead and implement those schedules first to, and I, and I mentioned just to kind of pick up on what uh, Pirate was saying, follow through can definitely be a big issue, right? I just For me, that. that's a big issue also. It's just, um, some of that is just starting small, right? A lot of that is actually just starting small. Figure out, does this work for you? If it works for you, go a little bit deeper, try to figure out what else works for you. And the review never stops, right? Even nope. when you're at the level that Petra and Galen are, they're still continuously reviewing to see if their systems are working for them. And because sometimes their businesses grow or their needs change, then they require a different type of system. Um, for me, I am probably at, let's just call it, if they're at the, uh, c-suite level or the middle <laughs> management level let's to use corporate america terms i'm at the entry level job and right the my job is organization is entry level so i Joel's use an unpaid intern i'm an unpaid intern i'm, I'm the uh the labor free labor known as college student right so it's just basically um i use the g suite also the google suite of products and that's simply because um that's who i use for my my website that's who i use for my email and so everything works out well together i have a google phone so that also everything just kind of ties in together nicely um uh so whether that's google calendar google uh and gmail or like tasks or the i think google's equivalent of evernote is google keep so it's basically just like a notepad that you can kind of just like sign up and stuff like that also um and there's just a lot of different things that you can kind of um, do with G Suite and it's probably not quite at the level of, of organization as Galen's um, wealth planning or financial planning specific software and there's there's the equivalent also for legal software like where they're doing a lot of other things but the main thing is to kind of start off small make sure you have a system you can readily use and then from there you jump into more advanced systems and figure out how you can kind of port your experience that way um, mm -hmm. starting up if you want to get really small then just this this is what my dad's been doing for, and he's he's very well organized. He's been doing this probably for, I don't know, tens of years, right? So, but then basically, he always keeps in a old school spiral notepad in his pocket, right? So he gets he gets to the point where he won't wear shirts without breast pockets because he doesn't have a place to put his spiral notepad. Right? That, that, he's made his environment yeah. work for his organizational system. Yeah. That's perfect. He sounds really cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then, then he has that that three inch notepad that he just and he writes everything in there. He writes to do lists. He writes things that were inspiring to him. He writes people's contact information. Um, and then one of the easy things is those papers are very easy to kind of tear off and just hand off to somebody else if you want. And then he keeps all. So we ha he has like boxes and boxes of just these old like. 10 cent notepads that you can get anywhere right so the, and i know that like i local kind of have mentioned that she uses a notepad also I, i'm assuming hers is a digital notepad but you can they have 
hybrids of these things. I've seen phone cases that on the back was a sticky pad, a sticky notepad that you can kind of do the same thing. It's pretty cool, actually. And then, um, I mean, one of the big pluses about the Surface Pro, and I'm not sponsored by Microsoft or anything, although if you want to reach out to us, hit, 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 you, can, you can find <laughs> us over here, right? Yeah. So um, the Surface I've Pro is I've sold three of them now. Yeah, you can, <laughs> you can write on there, and then you can write on the sticky digital notepad, and it'll save them for you as your notes. I used to use, um, there was something for like desktop notepads or something like that. So I used to use that on, on my PC, but now I don't do that anymore. Um, and just because we're on Twitch and a lot of us are gamers by default there, I used to use um, a site called Habitica. Uh, oh yeah, I use Habitica. Which is basically like gaming your gaming your to-do list and gaming your... So it has a lot of things on there. It has to-do lists. It has um, uh, ritual tracking or habitat tracking and that kind of stuff. And then you can even join guilds and that kind of thing and get like fancy little cosmetic things to help you with your organization. I think the reason I stopped using that was because it took a lot of time to like kind of put in all those things. And I was being the, you know, I was kind of like gaming it itself where I was putting all these like simple tasks, like brushing your teeth, Ooh, five gold every day for brushing my teeth or something like that. Right. So, right. but it's just, um, but that, that might be something that's worth exploring again. Also part of it, I would admit that part of it was also just because I wasn't probably utilizing the system enough to kind of make it so that it was working for me. So that was an area that I probably would have had to review. Um, but, and I think uh, right now I've kind of do a mixture of digital notepads and on my desk. I do physical notepads. ones too, for yeah, sure. physical ones, but then. I, Blizzard, uh, this was in my yeah. <laughs> box from Wrath of the Lich King. There you go. And I'm not quite through it yet. And um, so I still use that. I, th I think just one of the problems is that like uh, it's, there's no way to cloud sync your physical notepad with anything else, right? But then it's just kind of a, you, sometimes that's not- That's why you write it in your CRM yeah. that you actually buy and use, Joel. Yeah, so that's why it's it's a matter of, and this goes back to re reviewing if it's actually worth the expenditure, right? I'm just, I'm sure Galen's uh, software is not cheap, but he the way he uses it, it probably is a worthy expenditure. Cost me 30 bucks a month, dude. Yeah. That's more than those 10 cent notepads <laughs> that my dad uses, right? So, um, but yeah, and I think like find out what your needs are. A, a lot of it is also analyzing what your specific needs are. For me, one of the, my biggest organizational headaches is time tracking or timekeeping because as an attorney, you bill in one tenth increments of an hour, right? So you got to figure out how many six minute intervals that you spend on you. So they have software that does that automatically for you saying like you're working on this, you just start a stopwatch and then that kind of helps you with your mm -hmm. automated invoice, which Going back into one of the things, the, the tips that I would have shared, um, and this is kind of uh, the only tip I really have simply because my organization itself still requires a lot of improvement. Um, but as Galen said, setting up yourself to not fail, for me, that would be automating as much of the organization process as possible. Because if I don't have to do it, then I, that means I'm not messing it up. Somebody else is doing it for me or some other program or hardware is doing it for me. Yeah. Let's kind of take no, a look and see. Agree. Do you guys have any other comments while you guys are kind of sharing your closing thoughts or anything like that? Let's go ahead and look through chat to see what other people have have sh uh, shared. They were really happy that my cat interrupted me. That was primarily. Everyone's it. always happy for a cat yeah. on the yeah. internet. Internet's love <laughs> cats. Uh, I think that also uh, don't underestimate like people that inspire you to be organized, I think. Um, or knowing that you, you need some, if you are the type of person who needs someone to validate, having a friend that helps keep you accountable is also really good, particularly when you're just oh, starting yeah. out trying to get organized. Um, you can just ask a friend to say, Hey, I'm really trying to work on this thing. Can you help me in these ways? Um, be, be clear with how you want to help because not everybody gives help the same way. <laughs> mm -hmm. If you are not the type of person who likes a drill master who's like, why are you late with this thing? Then that's not gonna work and that's just gonna set you up for failure with that person. So um, don't be afraid to experiment and try and say like, I'm gonna try this thing for a week and that's it. And at the end of the week, set a time on your calendar or set a time like ask a friend to say or your your partner, or your, your spouse, like, I want to sit down and talk about how this went for me or how it didn't. And sometimes, or, or I want to journal about how it went and just write down, did it go or did it not go for you? Um, and then try and iterate from there. Don't, um, yeah, I think like I would wrap and just say, you are your own journey in your own organization. Uh, pick the, pick one aspect to start. 
and then move on from there. Don't try and take on the world all in one day and eat your elephant in one bite um, because you'll choke. (laughs) <laughs> and then uh, don't um, forget that your life is your own and things can change over time and that what works now may not work later for other tasks. So don't be afraid to have different organizational tools for different tasks in your life. My day job as a product manager has a very different organizational system that I have set up versus my life as a caster. Um, and also don't be afraid to delegate or ask others for help. Um, I think one of the things that, about organization is you think that I should be able to do this all. And I was really guilty of it and I've burned out and I'm only crawling my way back out of that recently um, as I thought I could do all these things and I realized I can't. So, uh, and no matter how much of an organization I had, it was just too much in one time. So know your own limits and be, be aware of that. And as casters, uh, know, to, like, know your value of your time. Um, there are people here like Galen and Shang who are making it their business to help you be more efficient and utilize your time better um, and, and reap rewards. So don't be afraid of saying, you know what? I'm not an expert in this. I need someone who is an expert. Um, and if you can't pay cash for it, um, know your value in other areas uh, that you can also pay for. So um, organization doesn't just have to be a physical system of organizing stuff. It can also just be a mental way of conducting your life. So. And uh, don't, don't, you know, don't be late for stuff. It's a really bad impression. (laughs) It's my, it's my personal thing I'm working on this year. So, uh, but yeah, I think, I think everybody can be organized. It's just, what are you organized? What are you motivated to be organized for? So find that and then everything else will follow. I think that was wonderful. I don't don't really actually have too much to to add to that. Although I will say that like, uh, it's almost like you, are highlighting the rest of our business hygiene habits for us because we have a specific show dedicated to relationships, which includes delegation and outsourcing, right? And then we also have uh, balance, which you had talked about, which made self care and maintaining your your um, you know mental health. Um, yeah, I, I do like that you were sharing your one organizational goal. Uh, so, and if I was going to share, actually, get it. Yeah, I'll share mine first. If I was going to share my own organizational goal, it would actually just be kind of uh, like a lot of people in chat are saying, setting up a system, starting small and actually sticking to that system. Right. And then it's uh, exactly what Petra said. Don't be afraid to it, this is your own journey. You have to make it work for yourself. It has to apply for you. Right. But don't be afraid to reach out to help. That's kind of one of the reasons Petra's here, because she is such an inspiring organizational person to me that, that kind of I'm so glad that we were able to get you here on the show. And so thank you for joining us also. Um, I'm glad I was on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Galen, what about you? Uh, I'd say my current biggest goal from the organization side is re-engage with the time and task tracker that I set up. Um, I have been really good about doing it for a while. And then I as a part of my reanalysis of it, decided to make some changes about the things that I was prioritizing. But then after that kind of fell out of that habit, I built the habit around one of the things I was prioritizing, realized it wasn't as important to me as some other stuff. But then because I wasn't doing that as often, that kind of pushed me out of the habit of updating the time tracker. And I really want to get back to that. It's just an Excel spreadsheet where I list out the things that I want to get done over a week and like the sort of broad tasks like spend x amount of time actually you know in seeking out conversations to engage in on twitter as opposed to just my natural scroll through the feed and every once in a while i'll I'll, you know interject but like actually seek out like am i seeing a a create a content creator talking about taxes or something like that and or like make sure that i'm you know sending out a certain number of like hey, this is something that I'm working on and I could use your help on it or those kinds of things. Um, so that'd be my big one is just re-engaging with that. Uh, I will say the accountability buddy thing about finding someone to help you with it has been really big for me. I did forget to mention that, but I actually have three independent structures set up to help me with that. One's a guy I meet with every week. One's a group that I'm just starting up meeting with through my uh, planning network that I just joined. And then the others I actually a a business coach where the biggest thing that she does is listen to me bitch about things and then help me make sure that I'm actually following up on the tasks that I said I was going to do. 
that I'd are love to know how broader. much she paid because that would be a job I would love to do. <laughs> I can put I can put you in touch with her. She I mean it really is well actually you know on that note um, Havoc has someone that he contracts with to help him organize his cons like his schedule for conferences where she does all of his like and and I think for more than just him but all of his like here's the people you're meeting with at this time and what you need to prep for it because he's too busy to do that mm. leading up to conferences, but it's so important. So it actually is a thing. Like professional organizer is a thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I, I, I've told this to Petra many, many times over. <laughs> if I could afford to hire her full time to help me with my numerous projects, I would. And that's still a goal of mine to get to that It doesn't have level. to be full time. My yeah. business coach's full time business isn't me. She's got, I'm sure, a ton yeah, of other people it, that she yeah. works with. I don't pay her enough for yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. So like between, don't worry, Shane. Yeah, there's between a, there's me and my other business, business partners. Happening. Yeah. Between me and my other my business partner, I think like we were like, how can how many how much do we need to split Petra? Yeah. <laughs> so basically Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I mean that is a thing though. Like I have a I have a friend um who is a paraplanner, which is sort of equivalent to a paralegal. She does a lot of the uh, grunt work of actually crunching numbers and, and things like that for four different financial planning firms that split like pay her yeah. a full-time salary between the four of them but it's not four separate firms that she's contracted right. with it's four firms that came together to put a single agreement out to contract her full-time because they knew she couldn't do it full-time mm -hmm. from just one of them and they also knew they couldn't afford to pay her a full-time for just one of them so it actually was worth it to um to, to to put that kind of agreement in place and i just saw loco's loco yells at me to keep me organized too yeah but that's ad yeah. hoc you just yell at me like when you feel like it yeah that's that's not scheduled structured and, and that's it, the best kind you got a spontaneous yeller yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. well I one that when, i don't necessarily want to have her build structure around her yelling <laughs> right yeah well like because that's not a motivator for you right yeah. but there is something to be said that if you like for those of you who are watching this and you're like i do all this stuff i could totally do it like Community managers for casters fulfill this role oh, for yeah. a lot of casters. Oh, I don't yeah. like if you are the type of person who is watching this and saying like I'm a nun or an eighth, I can easily do that. You do not know how many people need people like us who are organized in this industry, and you can easily form your own business or volunteer to get started and build it on your resume mm -hmm. if you want to get experience in it to do it in the industry, but then take it outside of this industry and get another job. Don't underestimate volunteerism and making your own internship opportunities to enable you to build out your resume and experience. Um, I have done that and I feel like I have become a better, more rounded person because I have sought out opportunities that I didn't get paid for, but gave me an opportunity to try something out. And then I found out what I liked and what I didn't like about it. Um, mm -hmm. And so if that is a thing that you are good at, like, there are hundreds and thousands of casters who need this yeah. who are, are able to say if you can put the business pitch together to say i will save you x amount of time by doing these tasks for you and this is how much i would like to be paid or compensated or i'll do it for x amount of time per hours for this love like for introductions to these five people like you can make those kinds of businesses happen um on in within streaming and not just localized to twitch but other platforms within the industry as well um, so don't hesitate to do that yeah. kind of stuff. I think that's a wonderful point. And like totally. definitely, uh, and if you can't tell, the reason that we have this show is because the three of us are all passionate about content creation and streaming and gaming and this kind of stuff, right? Uh, if you can't tell already, we're not professional streamers. At least Galen and I aren't professional streamers, right? So we, oh, God, no. No, yeah. Uh, though we are not um, by any stretch of the means that someone that can hold a conversation like with just you would not want to watch me play video games let's just put it that way right because there's a lot of not things getting done and just dying right and then it's just me cursing and then like yeah so i don't know people watch me die <laughs> yeah. mario would love it <laughs> yeah but um so but there are still so many ways as petra was mentioning that you can get involved in this industry and to help this industry using the talents that you do have whether that's organization or whether that's community engagement or whether that's just being a friendly face or a friendly voice, right? So um, that's what we're doing. Then Galen and I just happen to do that in a professional, in a, in a slightly different profession than most other people do, right? Because, um, but at the core of it, we're still people that just, we spend a lot of time playing games and we spend a lot of time enjoying people that play games. Um, and that's why we're doing it. We wanted to, do, to build these personal relationships as well. I got sick of watching streamers talk about how little they knew about the stuff that I knew about 
And it's yeah. like, wow, I can actually save them a lot of time because I already know it. Now, it, it, it really is the, the it's a time saving piece because people could figure it out on their own for sure. It would just take a while because yeah. they'd actually have to dedicate time to it. And they're already busy people. Yes. And yeah, and I would, I would almost throw, I would put this out there also. The people that make entertaining streamers are almost inclined to be not organized. So, yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. I love like streamers, the but they're so annoying yeah. to work with. Yeah. So you were like, amazing, but annoying. Yeah. You would, you, you, I'm sure like, and I would argue that Loco is the exception to this because she's the seems rare like a, exception. A, yeah, the rare exception. But for most people working with streamers, if you work with them behind the scene, I think the one analogy that I've heard across the board is, is like herding cats, right? So you too could be a professional cat herder if you wanted to. <laughs> and if you have those skills, right? Yep. So. All right, I think that's a good spot. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Uh, before we sign off, though, Petra, thank you for being here. You've been so mm -hmm. wonderful. Tell the chat where they can find you and what to. This is your self-promotion go fuck wild part. Yeah. <laughs> Although, let, let, me so, permit you, let me permit you first so you don't get banned in the chat again. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. That was that was cool. Um. So right now you can find me on Twitter predominantly. Uh. I am trying to get back into streaming. I did take a little break because um. Sometimes people get burned out and they need a reassessment. Um. Which I've been very happy about my focus and organization for that because I've lost twelve pounds from last year. Nice. So, yeah. So um. Yeah. But I'm hoping to get back into streaming soon. Um. There'll be a lot of changes coming to my life and subsequently streaming in the next year, but um, you can find me on Twitter at PetraCat09, or 09. You can also find me on Twitch at PetraCat as well um, for the occasional stream right now. And then I am also the operations manager for Layer One, which is a streamer tool that you are welcome to use for all of your streaming needs. We have a free and um, an essentials layer, um, as well as a plus membership um, if you wanna go beyond. And I'm putting all my organizational tools behind that for the moment in the streaming industry. So uh, stay tuned on our blog, is which I write and I do all our marketing. And uh, I do have a, um, for those of you who are aspiring casters, um, I did just put a blog post up about maximizing your schedule and how to make your schedule work as if you were a TV producer for your own content. So if you nice. are interested in anything like that, hit me up on the Layer 1 Twitter and I'd be happy to give you advice. And then I am also available for organizational consulting for your streams and uh, would love to help you out for that for, for, for opportunities abounding, <laughs> maximizing awesome. your stream. So, yeah. yeah. All right, Galen. What about me? Is that what we're doing? Yes. <laughs> this uh, is the yeah. contact information portion of our agenda. Oh, uh, yeah. Yep. Fair enough. Um, so, Joel link. Yep. My Twitter there. Um, that's probably the easiest way to find everything else for me, but I do run a blog, uh, pajama pants finance or pajama pants, depending on how you pronounce it. But, uh, that I put out nearly every week. I didn't last week, but that's because I'm working on a really big article, um, about the sort of business and finance side of, uh, running a stream and also digging into the personal finance side. Cause actually what I do is help people figure out their personal finances. Um, it's again, the kind of thing that you can figure out on your own if you wanna take the time and learn it and do it. And if you don't have the interest or the time, that's what I help with. Uh, my website beyond the blog is buckyourfinances.com. And I am at, on Twitter, I'm Galen HDEC, which is Galen and then part of my last name. Um, anything else? For me? Yeah. I don't think so. Okay. I would inc highly encourage everybody to go ahead and uh, subscribe to his articles and his Buff Your Finances because there's a lot of great information out there that um, uh, I think is extremely valuable. And I would actually go ahead and maybe go a little further and say you should not spend the time to try to become an expert in that because <laughs> it takes a long time as someone who has used to do that. So uh, it's better just to go ahead and find somebody like Gain who can help you do that. Spend your time more wisely doing the things that you are good at rather than doing things that you might be okay at after spending many, many years. Because let Galen do that. He's already spent those many, many years and many, many thousands of dollars to spend to figure that out. Oh, right? Yeah, thanks for the reminder. Yep. So, <laughs> but he can help you if you did spend those many thousands of dollars in school. Um, but my name is Joel. Uh, you can find me at Shang at Law at um, Twitter at Shang at Law and also Twitch at Shang at Law also. 
Um, I am an attorney. I am, uh, my background is in business law and tax law. So we will be talking about a lot of that stuff upcoming here in the future. But for now, uh, my goal is to help streamers and other content creators understand the legal and business needs that they have as a small business. Um, helping and whether that's through contract drafting, contract review, contract negotiation, or just helping you form a legal entity or doing anything else that requires, you know, making sure you stay out of trouble and stay out of jail or stay out of court getting sued because that's not fun and very expensive. Um, so, the good stuff. yes, yeah. the good stuff, right? <laughs> and um, uh, we, and this show is Streamer Square, uh, your brand, your business on Streamer Square. Thank you, Local, again for providing this space for us. Um, this, the purpose, one of the purposes of Streamer Square is for educational sharing, right? Uh, so, and this is to introduce content creators to professionals like us here on, on stream, including Petra as an organizational professional to help you to find out what resources are available to, so you can do your job better and worry about things less. Um, so we do this show just about every Sunday. We're trying to do it every Sunday at 2 PM central time. That's 3 PM Eastern and noon Pacific. Um, the reason I mentioned our lovely agenda earlier is because Galen and I, although he is a good organizer, we have still, our, I guess our average for organization for your brand, your business has, let's just put that in the needs improvement category, where we are improving. <laughs> Thanks again to Loco for her overlays and for all of these wonderful things. And also for us doing better planning and scheduling and uh, discussing to, to make sure we're not just two rambling idiots to going off on a lot of tangents. Um, and so thank you again for joining us. Petra, for joining us, these two rambling, not so idiotic people anymore, uh, as we get better organized. Um, any comments from chat? Anything else that you guys would like to say uh, to our lovely people? Thank you for joining us. If you're watching on uh, on a video on demand, thank you for watching. Um, and until what's our topic next week, Galen? Next week, we I don't think I planned that far ahead. We can't do that on our organizational <laughs> episode. I'm kidding. Yeah. Um, I'm we kidding. are we are continuing with our business hygiene theme which we are going over the specific practice of which one should we talk about yeah. i'm sorry i thought i was just being funny oh <laughs> yeah. yeah so what do you want to talk about next week what should the lovely people of the internet talk about next week let's go ahead and talk about the relationships right and because yeah, we talked about that a lot today about great. delegation yeah. and outsourcing and really just no man is an island so figure out how you can use other people effectively not in like taking advantage of them or anything but you know utilizing them to develop um connections and cooperation not competition so that'll right. be next week on your brand your business again here at twitch.tv slash dreamer square noon pacific 3 p.m eastern we hope you'll join us thank you here for being here bye all bye <laughs>